from the Boston Museum of Science, SciTech Today on NECN. Now at SciTech Today, a device that could make cancer testing more available worldwide. It's called the Nuclear Magnetic Resonance System, and it's actually been around for decades. So what's new? A Harvard researcher has found a way to shrink it from 250 pounds to this device, which weighs less than a quarter of a pound. Nanotechnology correspondent Alex Fiorentino joins us live from the Museum of Science in Boston. Welcome, Alex. How could this device help fight cancer? Uh, well, Chad, this is a device that detects cancer in the blood. So tumors release certain cancer markers into the blood, and by detecting them, we can do a much better job of diagnosing and monitoring cancer. Uh, so, unfortunately, the techniques we use to do these tests can be pretty inconvenient. Uh, so they often involve uh, laboratory equipment that's very expensive and isn't available mm -hmm. to everyone. So for today, what we're looking at is a, a different way of testing the blood for cancer called nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR. And basically what NMR is, is it's like an MRI scan, except instead of scanning the whole body, you're only scanning a tiny sample of someone's blood. All right, so this is based on an MRI scan, but those aren't exactly cheap or convenient. How is this NMR different? Uh, well, in, in many cases, actually not that much different. So I have a picture here of an actual commercial NMR machine, and you can see that it's, it's a pretty bulky device, and it's also quite expensive. So this really doesn't help make this testing more available to people. Um, however, uh, so, so what, what we're talking about here is a, a scientist named Nan Sun who's an electrical engineer from Harvard University. And Nansun saw that the real problem with these big NMR devices mm -hmm. was the giant magnet inside of them. So there are two main components to every NMR machine, a magnet which pulls on your blood sample with a magnetic field, and a transceiver which zaps the sample mm -hmm. and uh, receives back the signals to detect what's in the sample. Mm -hmm. So normally, the magnet is by far the biggest and most expensive piece of the NMR machine. Um, and, and so a real NMR magnet would be many, many times bigger than this, and it would weigh hundreds of pounds. But Nan and his advisor, Don He Ham, realized that these big, expensive magnets really weren't necessary. A tiny magnet would work just as well. Uh, you would just need the other component, the transceiver, to be sensitive enough. So Nan went to work on this. He's an electrical engineer. So he completely redesigned the NMR transceiver. And within a few months, he had created this, which is basically the same device. It's got a magnet and a transceiver, but this is 1,200 times smaller, 150 times more sensitive, and 1,400 times cheaper than a commercial NMR machine. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So it was just uh, reworking the transceiver that allowed him to shrink that device down to what you just showed us. Yeah, what? that's... Oh, par par pardon me, Chad. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that... Um, so. Tricking that down was a, was a huge part of what made this possible, but also uh, Dr. or excuse me, Nan borrowed a technique from some other researchers at Harvard, and that was to add magnetic nanoparticles to his blood samples. So to explain why exactly he would want to do that, let's take a look at this model I have right here. So imagine that this red area is your blood sample, and you've added to it these magnetic nanoparticles, although in reality the magnetic nanoparticles are hundreds of thousands of times smaller than this. But if there's no evidence of cancer in your blood sample, then the nanoparticles are just scattered around. But if you do have a cancer marker present in the blood, then the nanoparticles are attracted to it. They stick to it, and they form this cluster around it. This cluster is very, very easy to detect using NMR. So what we've done here is make this test much more sensitive. Instead of trying to find this one little cancer marker, you're able to find the big magnetic cluster that's surrounding it. All right, Alex, that's fascinating stuff. Alex Fiorentino, thanks for joining us live today from the Museum of Science. Thanks for having me, Chad.